Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So if you're new, welcome. My name's Arusa and I'm currently a third year medical student studying in Bulgaria. So I asked you guys the other day to send me some questions in on Instagram about studying abroad and anything you wanted me to answer. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do today. This might be a really long video or it might be split into two parts. So yeah, let's jump straight into it. So I've written down all of the questions in my phone and yeah, the first question that I get asked so much is about the entrance exam. Okay guys, calm down. <laughs> like honestly, like the agency you go with, so like say if you go with iGeneration, they will prepare you for the entrance exam. They will give you sample papers. They will give you like all, everything that you need, okay? So don't worry about it. It's gonna be fine. Like honestly, don't worry about the entrance exam. It's gonna be fine. If you're going with an agency, they'll prepare you for it. They will give you like sample questions, practice papers. As long as you go through all of them, they're very similar. So don't worry, honestly. And the entrance exam is based on biology, chemistry, and English as well and then um, Sophia and I know Pleven you have to go to the university to take the entrance exam but I know Plovdiv is doing online entrance exams this year due to Covid um, but yeah the next question about the entrance exam is if the entrance exam is the same year you are starting and yes it is so I took my entrance exam at the end of August and then I started in mid-October from what I remember or it was mid-September, I think it was mid-October, but yeah, so it's the same year that you start, so if you take it this year, um, like say August 2020, you will be starting in October 2020, okay? Another question I get asked is if you can apply for medicine with BTEC Applied Science Level 3, and the answer is yes, I'm, I think you can, like 90% sure, but um, yeah, I think you need to get a paper from your college or your sixth form like, stating that that included biology and chemistry and then it should be all good, but just check with the agency as well and I'll leave, I'll leave the email address down below so that you can email them any specific questions, but from what I know and from what I've asked is that you have to get a letter from your uh, college stating that it contained like that course contained biology and chemistry and then you can move forward with that okay one question left for the entrance exam and that's basically if the entrance exam will be hard for BTEC students I know it won't be like it's the same exam for everybody and it's not going to be hard for you because you should have covered biology and chemistry in if you did BTEC applied sciences and you're going to get practice papers from your agency anyways so if you as long as you go through them then you'll be fine, so don't worry about it. Don't stress too much, guys. You guys are stressing too much. <laughs> okay, so another interesting question that somebody asked was, are you worried that you will not be prepared for the UK MLA as the standards of teaching are not the same as the UK? And, okay, so let's start with what the UK MLA is. So the UK MLA is a UK medical licensing exam, for those of you who don't know, and anyone who's graduating as an international student in 2022 will have to take that exam and after so the year after, so 2023, UK students will also have to take that exam. So my answer to the question is, I'm not really worried that much. Of course, the standards of teaching are different and you're gonna be like prepared for the NHS from the get-go in a UK university, but I guess that's something I will have to teach myself. And to be honest, the content that we cover here and in the UK is exactly the same. It's just the teaching style that is very different. So, and obviously the hospital environment and the clinical side of things is very different as well from the UK. So it's not as much that I'm worried about taking the exam because to be honest, as a doctor, you will always have to study by yourself. There's not gonna be someone or like a professor always on your head asking you, have you studied this? Have you studied that? It's not gonna be like that. You have to study by yourself. Most of it is self-learning. So as long as you are like consistent, you're motivated, you're not even motivated, okay? Motivated is not even the word. You just have to be consistent because you're not always gonna be motivated. There's gonna be some days where you don't wanna do it, but you have to do it. So you have to be consistent. So that's all I can say, to be honest. You just have to teach yourself and you just have to push yourself to be the best that you can be. I think another thing is if you believe that you're at a disadvantage, because because you're coming from a foreign country into the UK I feel like that should be something that will push you to be better anyways so you should always strive to be the best you can be especially as a doctor because you don't want to put your 
patient's life in jeopardy basically. So another question I get asked is what's first and second year like? So first, second and third year are basically mainly your theoretical years and your preclinical years and then fourth to sixth year are your clinical years. So in your first, second and third year you have seminars and you have lectures. So a lecture is a normal lecture where the professor is just going through like the whole syllabus with you throughout the year and um, it's in a lecture hall and seminars are in like smaller classrooms. You're in a group of 12 and um, yeah, it's more like a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing with your um, seminar teacher as it's more smaller groups. So you can ask them uh, any specific questions and you also have like the end of semester test and your mid semester test with that seminar teacher. Also, don't get on your bad side of your seminar teacher because your seminar teacher might be your examiner and you should just be on their good side at all times, okay? Let me just drop that in there. <laughs> okay, so another question is what is your daily routine like? And to be honest, like it varies from day to day. So in first year, I had to go in every single day and that was so tedious, oh my god. So we had to go in from Monday to Fridays. Some days you start at eight in the morning, but then you finish at around like half one. And some days you'll start like, some days you might have like one morning seminar and then one really late seminar, say at like 5 p.m. and then you finish at like 7, 7.30. In second year, we had a day off, which was really nice. And your days aren't like packed, like it's not eight o'clock in the morning to like 5 p.m. every day. It's not like that for us. It's like you have your seminar, you can go to the lecture if you want, it's not compulsory, but you can go to it. But the days are quite like, they vary a lot. Some days, as I said in for first year, you might be in from like eight till half one. So yeah, so you might be in between there or you might have to come in just for one evening class. So it really depends and it depends on if you attend the lectures. Just because the lectures aren't compulsory, but you should go to them if you want. Okay, so another question I get asked is how often do I travel home? And I feel like in the beginning you travel home a lot just because you're new to this place and you just don't want to stay here and you want to see your family as much as possible. So in the beginning, I think I went home three times in the year during the whole academic year. So I think I went home three times. So that was in um, December holidays. I went home in the April holidays and I went home for summer holidays as well. In second year, I, d I just went home once and that was in December. And then after that, I went home for summer, of course. And then um, third year, I went home due to COVID. Otherwise, I really wouldn't have gone home, to be honest. Um, so yeah, that was the whole situation. I feel like you go home more in first year just because you're new to this place. You don't want to stay here, as I said before. And you just miss your family. But honestly, as the years go on, you get more comfortable with staying here and you don't really want to travel much. But some people travel home a lot, like after every three months or something they will go home for a weekend just because they want to but i also feel like that gives you like a less advantage because if you go home too often you don't have time to get comfortable with this place and you need to get comfortable with this place because you're going to be here for the next like six years or six and a half years of your life so you might as well get comfortable if you keep flying back home you're not like you're not going to be able to like transition yourself into here so yeah, that's my opinion on that. So somebody asked what are some essentials that you should bring from home? And I honestly think, okay, if you're Muslim, I think you should bring like mince meat. I'm not even joking. Like, <laughs> firstly, actually, even if you're not Muslim, just bring like some home food because you're gonna miss your mom's cooking. So just bring some frozen home food and then stick it in your freezer for every time like you can't be bothered to cook or you're missing home because that way at least you have some home food. And if you're Muslim, bring some minced meat because I haven't found a good place that does it here. And the one time I did eat it from here, like I got a really bad stomach upset. So I always bring that from home and I freeze it the night before and then I wrap it in cling film. I know it's a whole process, but you like wrap the box in clean film and then you just take it out of the freezer. The morning that you're flying or the evening that you're flying, you'll take it out of the freezer and stick it in your bag. A lot of people bring home food and I didn't know that in the beginning because that's such a smart idea, honestly. It's like genius. So bring home food because honestly, you'll miss it so much and it helps as well so, so much. Also, I would say bring spices because I still don't know the name of the spices in Bulgarian. So it's just easier if you have your own spices from home. It's just easier for cooking and you can cook like literally the day you land, but you don't want to cook. So you bring the frozen food so that you can just defrost it. <laughs> so another thing I would say is that I know this is like not relevant to like studies or anything, but you honestly don't need anything that's relevant to like studies to bring with you unless you're very picky about stationery, which I'll go into in a second. But I would also say if you want and you're lazy like me, 
bring a rice cooker honestly it's like 20 pounds on amazon guys like the rust i think my one's russell and hobbs but i'll leave the link of it down below on amazon and i think it's like 20 pounds and honestly it saves you so much time because you just need to put the rice in it and then you go ahead and you carry on studying or you carry on doing whatever you was doing and that's it your rice is cooked it's honestly amazing like it saves you so much time as a student i know it doesn't taste as great as if you make the rice yourself but it just saves you so much time as a student and everybody needs time okay time is precious yeah so <laughs> i will leave the link of that down below i think that's something really handy to bring as well okay so me i'm very picky with stationery so i bring my particular refill pad from ryman's so it looks like this and it's basically the narrow line oh don't mind that that's my so it looks like this it's like thin lined i don't even know if you can see that but it's a very narrow lined paper and it's very white paper and that's the kind of paper that i like so i'm very picky with paper because i don't like it when there's fat lines and jumbo so jumbo is the shop that you're most likely going to get all your stationery from and honestly it's my favorite shop you're going to love it so much but yeah so they don't really have like white crisp paper and if they do it's like fat lines which i don't like so you know we're discriminating here i like the narrow lines better and also i prefer like my own pens but they have like loads of pens here i'm just really picky okay i'm just really picky about my stationery let's just leave it at that but i would definitely say bring some home food bring some spices and get yourself a rice cooker because it saves you so much time if i remember anything else i'll write in the description bar but that's all i can think of right now so another question i get asked is how do you balance it all so revision shopping blah 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 guys it's not it's not like your day is not that packed as you think it is you can actually fit a lot of things into your day as long as you organize yourself well like you can easily waste so much time but if you organize your time well you can fit everything in it's not that hectic honestly the years aren't that hectic as long as you plan your time well only during exam time that's when all hell breaks loose but throughout the year it's not that hectic if you plan your time well guys time management is everything if you plan your time well you can accomplish anything you can accomplish anything you want in life okay if your time management skills are up there okay so let's work on that so another question i get asked is what is six year like and will you come home to practice i'm not sure yet whether i'll come home to practice to be honest but six year you can go abroad you can go back home to your countries to um, do your placement year so that really depends on you as a person and six year is again your clinical years so you'll be on rotations and after every single rotation you will take that exam another interesting question i get asked is why do men exchange from czech to bulgarian university so i asked a few people and what they said was that they didn't like the way their teachers taught them and also that your grade is more likely to reflect how much studying you have put in and how many like hours you have grinded in bulgarian universities compared to czech another advantage about being in bulgaria compared to czech was that you don't get to change your exam day so in czech apparently you get to choose your exam day i don't i still don't really understand this concept but you get to choose your exam day and then sometimes you don't get that place so it's still like kind of like up in the air which i think is really bizarre because everyone should take the exam on the same day as long as you're in like same groups or something i don't know but i think that's really bizarre but apparently you can change your exam date and sometimes it's like really up in the air and you don't know if you got the exam date you wanted so i would think that's so horrible because you need an exam date like everybody needs a deadline so that they can like grind towards that and work towards that deadline if you don't have that deadline and it's just all up in the air you're not gonna really want to work towards something so yeah that was a reason why some czech students come to bulgaria so another question i get asked is how do you study in medical university and any tips so for our course we basically have like colloquiums at the end of the semester and mid semester so it's good to like work on those and you cover if you cover the syllabus topics and work towards the colloquium you will find it easier for the final exam so for anatomy i would always really work hard for those colloquiums oh my god i would work so hard and then when it came to the exam time i found it easier to study those because i really worked hard for that colloquium so it helps to have those mid-semester tests and end of semester tests because it, it starts to prepare you for the actual exam so i would say pace yourself throughout the year make sure you're going through the syllabus and learn your stuff before the seminar honestly it helps so much like it really does help so much 
So guys, because this video was so long, I split it up into two parts. So make sure you hit that notification bell to be notified for when the next one is posted. And yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and keep posted for the next one.